With PS Love Every Day, we're able to share the story that tomorrow is going to be better. And I think that's really hard to understand. But once you get to that next day, then the next day you're doing it. I can't emphasize that enough is that through talking about PS Love Every Day, it's therapeutic for all of us. And so know that tomorrow is going to get better. Yeah, to all those people listening, for sure. Welcome to the Midland Money Mindset. This is a podcast that's all about getting your mind right when it comes to all things money. In every episode, we go deep with engaging guests who provide tangible takeaways and a whole lot of joy along the way. I hope you enjoy these conversations as much as I enjoyed having them. Let's dive into today's show. I'm Larry Sprung, your host for the Midland Money Mindset and founder and wealth advisor of Midland Financial. Today's guests are Brooke and Jamie DePama co-founders and directors of PSI Love You Day. Brooke and Jamie co-founded PSI Love You Day following the tragic loss of their father, Joseph De Palma, to suicide. Brooke recalls her dad dropping her off at school the morning they lost her dad, and on her way out of the car, her father said, I love you, and she said, I love you back. Little did she know, only hours later, she would be taken out of school and told her father had died. Seven months later, as Brooke was thinking about what she had faced, she remembered the last three words her father said to her, I love you. Taking those three words with the help of her high school classmates and family, PSI Love You Day was created. PSI Love You Day corresponds with the second Friday in February every year, and their mission is to bring awareness to the importance of mental health and decrease bullying. People are asked to wear purple, stand up against bullying, help end depression, and ultimately prevent suicide. Their hope is on this day, you walk around your community, school, work office, and see a sea of purple. The goal is to hear nothing but positive messages that make you feel special, loved, and remind you that you are never alone and have this continue throughout the year. Listen in for some great takeaways about how Brooke and Jamie have turned a family tragedy into a mission to help others feel like they are never alone and raise awareness about mental health. Well, hello, everybody. Larry Sprung here. I have the great pleasure of being with Brooke and Jamie DePama, sisters who are the co-founders and directors of PSI Love You Day. Welcome to the show, ladies. Thank you for having us. Yeah, it's great to see you guys again. And in full disclosure, I met these two young ladies as a result of my work in mental health and suicide prevention. And they have an organization called PSI Love You Day, which is doing fantastic work in raising awareness. But I don't want to tell you the story. So, Brooke, Mm -hmm. can you tell our listeners about your path to founding PSI Love You Day? How did it all come about? Yeah, you know, Larry, it's been 12 years now since we started PSL Every Day, similar to unfortunately your situation and so many others. We wanted to do something after we lost our dad to suicide, and it really became an opportunity for advocacy after we lost our dad on April 23rd, 2010, that was. You know, at the time, Larry, I was only 14 and Jamie was only 18 years old, and so I was an eighth grader. Jamie was about to embark on her college uh, journey. And it was about seven months after I lost my dad, you know, our family lost our dad, that I remembered the last three words that he had said to me that beautiful, beautiful Friday morning in April of 2010, they were, I love you. And so, you know, when I I was in such a moment of such distraught, such grief, such pain, such heartache that we had lost our dad. And when I remembered those last three words, I said, he would not just want us to sit here and do nothing. And so with that said, I, you know, said, what if there's one day where people just came together and wore the same color and got the conversation going? And so I told my friends, I told my family, I told Jamie. And, you know, before we knew it, on the second Friday of February, we were celebrating that first PS I Love You Day back in 2011. And and Jamie got a few friends at Cortland to come together and and celebrate that day. And I got some of my peers at, at uh, West Islip High School to wear purple and now, 12 years later, we are continuing our mission to celebrate and honor PSA Levy Day in memory of our dad. So that's really that's the amazing. rundown. Yeah, I can't believe that's amazing. it. But... Jamie, do you have anything to add in terms of your impetus behind getting behind PSI Love You Day? Yeah. So when Brooke brought us the idea, my mom and I, we were like, okay, let's do this. And 
we went forth with it. And it's really amazing to see how it's grown. And we're so honored to have the support of friends and family for this day and to help um, stand behind our mission for mental health awareness. That's amazing. And I know you just recently had your most recent PSI Love You Day. How many people does this affect? How many schools were involved with this? And probably giving a precursor to a later question, but I know you had a lot involved, right? Our final number was 443 schools and businesses that signed up in celebrating PSI Love You Day and spreading mental health awareness and making that their mission a couple of weeks ago. What an amazing way to honor your dad and to make a good thing out of a difficult situation. So maybe, Jamie, you can take this one. What's the goal? What's the ultimate goal of PSI Love You Day? Our goal for PSI Love You Day is really to get the conversation started and for people to talk about mental health. Because believe it or not, more of us have difficulty with personal mental health than you would believe. And getting that, knowing that there's help out there and knowing that we can have a conversation around it and really taking away the stigma behind it and people understanding that there is help for them. They can seek help. They can speak to others. There's so many different avenues to take care of your mental health and know that your mental health is just as important as your physical health. Yeah. Right. And Brooke, we talked about, you know, Jamie mentioned the 400 mm-hmm. plus yeah. schools and businesses that you guys were implemented this this past year. So what is the goal there in terms of partnering with these schools and doing it through the businesses? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty incredible. The way that it works is essentially we have this website where people, you know, jump on it, they click get involved and they fill out, you know, a quick a few questions about their name, what school, what business they're at. And then we provide activities and worksheets and really a Kickstarter package to celebrate on the second Friday of February. But But the goal there is to really educate people about mental health. And, you know, when we started this, we were so young. So we hoped that by educating youth about mental health, it would ultimately empower that youth to then take the story to their parents. You know, at the end of the day, we were just trying to speak to parents in, you know, memory of our dad. And so by them coming online, by getting involved and by filling out this quick, you know, informational and by us providing them with the toolkit in order for them to kickstart their celebration by participating in mindfulness activities, by getting conversations going, by spreading kindness. You know, that's really the goal there. It's to make people feel good. And um, it's really, you know, evolved quite tremendously from, you know, just honoring our father by remembering those last three words to now these schools are participating, you know, with week-long events. These businesses are going out of their way to spread kindness to other businesses. And it's really just amazing to see the chain reaction that a kindness celebration can bring. Yeah, well, I think the conversation is here now stronger than ever, Mm -hmm. especially since the onset of the pandemic. I think people have really put mental health and kindness and things of that nature Mm -hmm. that we're talking about today at really the forefront. And I think even businesses now more than ever understand the value of having proper mental health and what they may need to implement in order to make that happen, to make their employees or stakeholders and teammates more productive and make sure that they're okay, most importantly. Yeah. So how are you as an organization, as a director of this organization, Brooke, how do you measure the impact of what you and PSI Love You Day is doing? You know what, Larry, the reality of it is that there is still a bit of stigma out there. So we can never really know how many, exactly how many people we hit. Because there's someone out there who might have heard our story, who might have told another person about our story, who might never come forward to the world and share their story, but they know that this day exists. So, you know, the full scope, we might have never, we might never get a grasp of what that is. Right. But I think the magic in it is that, you know, with these 443 schools and businesses, we're able to get a good sense of just how many people are are onboarding, how many people are participating in this day. And I think that's really the extent that we know of who celebrate this day with us and who take part in it. But every once in a while, Jamie and I will get messages from random folks across the country, across the world, and they'll tell their story to us. And I think that's where you really get the crux of the impact by hearing someone who doesn't know you, but wants to share their story with you. And and I think that really speaks to the impact of it in itself. Yeah, I mean, I get it. It's hard to track. I mean, there was a story that I read in the last year or so about a guy who put basically an open letter onto social media Mm -hmm. saying that he was at his wits end 
Mm. He was at like a drugstore getting a prescription and he needed to get to a train or a bus to get to his friend, his friend's place. And he felt mm -hmm. like if he didn't make it there to see his friend, that this might be the end of the road for him. And there was a couple who saw he was distraught and basically struck up a conversation with this guy and basically gave him a ride to the train or bus station, wherever he needed to go. And he was writing this open letter, basically saying, I'm standing here and writing this letter today as a result of the kindness of these strangers that had no idea who I am. I don't even know their name or number to even thank them, but I wanted to make sure that I recognize the impact that they had on my life. And these are the kinds of things that I think stem from an organization like yours, where it's tough to measure that impact. Don't you agree, Jamie? I agree because like Brooke said, you don't really know exactly who it's hitting. Like, yes, we can have pictures. Yes, we can have people sign up on our website to say that they're participating. But there might be someone on, in disclosure wearing purple on that day just because they know internally that it's something that's purposeful to them. Right. So you mentioned purple, which was a great lead in. People can't see you. I can. You guys are both wearing purple. I messed up today. I'm not wearing purple, <laughs> but that's okay. So that seems to be, and you've said it a few times, the premier color to commemorate your day. So why purple? What is there a significance there? And if so, what's that about? Yeah, Larry, you know, our, our dad's favorite color was gold. So just imagine the difference if this day was everyone wearing, our, wearing gold. But purple, when we were thinking, when we were developing this day now 12 years ago, it was sort of between a group of friends of mine. And we just had a few different colors on the table. We had pink, we had orange, we had purple. And purple just really came together as a, a symbol, you know, a sign that everyone was wearing a little something purple, a scarf, a necklace. You know, it just kept coming back to us. And you mentioned the story of this gentleman who just needed a sign. And to us, this purple was a sign. It was something that we kept seeing. And so it really has become, you know, the premier color, the symbol of PSA Levy Day. So, you know, hopefully, although we only celebrate on the second Friday of February, if you see something purple, if you if you see PS, I love you. It's a sign and it's meant to be. And so, I, you know, purple continues to speak volumes to this day. Yeah. I mean, I would imagine that although PS, I love you day is only one day, Jamie, that you want this really to create an impact that kind of lasts the whole year till you get to the next PS, I love you day. No? Yes. A hundred percent. Really get in communities talking about it. Families talking about it, the dinner table, just carry it over people. If they're wearing their PS, I love you day sweatshirt in May or wearing their t-shirt, they're still talking about, oh, remember that? Remember what we did for it? We should do something like that just because. The best thing is, you know, as I'm a teacher, the best thing is to hear about my students saying that they did something randomly because it reminded them of PSA Love You Day. That's like That's the best amazing. feeling because you know that they're carrying it over and it's not just impacting them for the six hour school day. It's impacting them longer than that. That's yeah. amazing. So Jamie, how has your work with PSI Love You Day and other mental health and suicide prevention initiatives impacted you personally? What's been the benefit? What's that impact been for you? So I would say the impact for me is getting myself educated on what's out there and then also letting other people know what is out there. So for example, as Brooke was saying, I went to Cortland. When I went to Cortland, I actually, after losing my dad, I went to a therapy group. At the therapy group, we started talking about PS I Love You Day and how this was going to be the first ever and everything. And then at that group, someone mentioned, oh, well, I know someone who actually lost someone else and they really could look for a friend right now. And they're a teacher at Cortland High School and her name is Amy and Amy is amazing. Mm -hmm. And so she linked us up and we ended up going, I ended up going to Cortland High School and creating a little club, the PSB Love You Club. And that was something that we actually did all school year round, doing different activities that followed the mission of PSA Love You Day. And through that, she's expressed to Brooke and I how much healing she has had for her, the passing of her friend that she lost and how it has helped her and how she hopes, you know, spreading the message to her students impacts it in a way that they can then bring it home and have that conversation with their families. Has this had a similar healing effect for you as well, being involved in PSI Love You Day? Yeah, it is definitely. I think, it, you know, it's, it's definitely healing and knowing that we're helping others is healing. I wouldn't be lying if I said it wasn't hard at times. It definitely sure. is difficult to then reflect yeah. back. And But knowing that we're helping other people that are going through similar situations or have lost someone, a lot of people say to us that they see strength and that helps them move forward. Knowing that, that we're helping them move forward 
that we're all kind of moving forward in this together is very helpful and therapeutic. That's great. And how has it affected you, Brooke, personally, your involvement? How has it impacted you? Yeah, well, I have to say hearing Jamie say those words, just hearing her talk is actually making me tear up a little bit just because (laughs) I feel as though, although you lose someone 12 years ago, it still feels like yesterday that we lost our dad. And so I truly believe that he's created this day with us. And so as I grew up, it's really allowed his light and his legacy to continue on. And, And honestly, light the way for me. I think that if it wasn't for PSA Every Day, I would have not had the honor to talk about my dad as much as I do, to not lead a life that he would have wanted. I think I would have been very closed off, a very bubbly, outgoing person. And this certainly took a toll on, you know, my crucial years of becoming a teenager and figuring out what I want to do in life. Jamie's a teacher and, and I'm a journalist. And so I really think that PSA Every Day has given me the opportunity and the voice to share my story, to be able to discuss it. And as a journalist, you know, I I try to do that. I try to share the stories of the time. And so it's almost like through this day, our our dad continues to light the way. And so healing for sure, but also coping with the loss. And it's really allowed me to keep that outgoing bubbly personality because it's taught me what resilience is. And I think that's one of the grandest lessons that is so under talked about and under discussed and should be discussed more. Yeah, we talk about resilience all the time in my household in terms Mm -hmm. of things don't necessarily have to always go your way and you got to use it as a learning experience. And I think one of the issues that we potentially have out in the world today is the whole helicopter parents kind (laughs) of, if that's even a word anymore, I call it more like deflector parents, right? They try to (laughs) jump in the way of all that adversity in front of their kids so they don't experience it. And there's a lot of value there for them experiencing that. And The stuff that you and I have gone through in our lives with the loss that we've seen, obviously, we don't want anybody to experience that. But that adversity, as you can see from the work that you're doing, the work that I've done, has created an environment that's had an impact on so many countless others, which is so much better than what the alternative would have been. Obviously, the best would have been to prevent what happened. But Mm -hmm. if we're not able to do that, at least I think... You guys are a testament to doing what's best and really having that impact that your dad had on you on so many others. So, uh, you know, thank you for doing that. Oh, and Larry, thank just you. really quickly, you know, on the resilience aspect of it is with PS Levy Day, we're able to share the story that tomorrow is going to be better. And I think that's really hard to understand. But once you get to that next day, then the next day you're doing it. You know, I can't emphasize that enough is that through talking about PS Levy Day, it's therapeutic for all of us. And so know that tomorrow is going to get better. Yeah. To all those people listening, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And you talk about the impact. One of the things that you talk about of the day is to let people know that they're never alone. What does that mean to you? Being never alone, then when they hear that, we want them to know that they have the support system around them, whether it be someone as random as going into the store. And just if you were to tell someone, say you're going to CVS and you're telling someone that, you having a bad day, I can guarantee you that there's going to be the cashier telling you right now it's going to get better. And then maybe who knows how you might have a connection with that person. But on a more deeper level, family members are there for you. And then your coworkers are there for you. Your friends are there for you. Anyone that you connect with is there to help you and lead you to the right path, lead you to get help, lead you to talk to therapy, lead you, whether it be psychiatrist, therapy, doctor, however you may be feeling to help guide your path and take it step by step. And that's why with wearing purple, they see everyone else surrounding them wearing the same color. And it shows that unity piece that no matter who is around you, they're there to help you. Amazing. Does that mean anything different to you, Brooke, meaning never alone or? I think that essentially, you know, it really means that there's a support system, whether in that exact moment you believe that people are there for you, you have to convince yourself that they are there for you. And, and, you know, when I, When we go to schools and we discuss this, I created something called like the A, B's and C's. And so the A's is advocating for yourself and for others. The B is boosting family and friend support. And the C is to seek care. And so I think with these A, B's and C's, people are able to realize that they're not alone, that at a moment where you can't advocate for yourself, there's someone else to advocate. Know that when you want to feel alone in your room, you have to bring in those family and friends. You have to bring in others. And you know, at the end of the day, If you're in a really tough spot, there is an opportunity for help. There is hope and there is help. And 
by seeking care, that person is there to help you that you're you're not alone and you're going to work through this. It won't be easy, but you're going to work through this. And so I think that's what never alone means is in those darkest days that there is someone out there who really needs you in their life and will miss you. Yeah, agreed. And I I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but I had a guest on the show, Charles Becker. Mm. He's from the 1940s brewery on Long Island, and they co-created an IPA for their brewery called Never Alone IPA. And it wow. I don't recall oh, really? the name of the band, but it has a neat little feature that on the can, it has a QR code that when you're drinking the beer, if you download the QR code, it takes you to a song that was co-created by a bunch of rock stars. Then the song's called Never Alone. So it's a oh, wow. really it interesting. Yeah, and a por- check the IPA out. Yeah, and a portion, <laughs> of the pro- to. <laughs> a portion of the proceeds go to suicide and mental health, which is wow, uh, really which nice. is even better. But yeah, I agree with you. I think that there's always help out there. And if you need it or want it, reach out, whether it's to an individual or a therapist or even calling the suicide prevention hotline. Absolutely. There are always people there to help you out. So I want to shift the conversation more to a global picture right now for a minute. Since losing your dad 10 plus years ago, let's start with you, Brooke. How do you feel the conversation has evolved, just a general conversation around suicide and mental health? I know since losing my brother-in-law about 17 years ago, I feel like it's changed significantly. So I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah, significantly to the nth degree, Larry. You know, it's amazing to see how far we've come, but it's also amazing to see how much left there is to do around this topic. I'll never forget when we were in the crux of losing our dad and we would tell people what had happened, people would respond with a gasp. And it certainly wasn't the best feeling. It was just such a heartache. And I still feel a heartache because... It made me feel like I couldn't share my story, that I had to keep my lips shut. And I'm so proud and so honored to be able to share the story of my dad for who he was and not what happened. And so I think that the taboo at that point in time was so, so heightened. But at that time, people did not discuss suicide, did not discuss mental health. And it was very under the rug sort of conversations. Sure, you know, we talked about in health class. And if you're struggling, go talk to a counselor. But nobody really discussed if it had happened in their family or if they knew someone who knew someone. And now, 12 years later, you know, we're hearing people's stories all the time. And Jamie and I get it quite often. And we're quite thankful when random people come up to us and they share their story with us. And I think that's what's changed is that people are coming forth and sharing their story and sharing their story if they suffer from depression or another mental illness or sharing their story of losing someone. And 12 years ago, I can tell you that we were not getting too many people coming up to us. Interesting. What about you, Jamie? How do you feel like it's uh, changed in the 10 plus years? Yeah, I feel the same way. I feel like it's changed immensely. When I was in college, I remember sharing how we lost our father. And many people had shared how, you know, you're not sharing it, that they died a different way. There is not a different story to this. Because a lot of people I found out have actually shared passing of loved ones or friends that they've passed in a different light instead of conversating around how they actually died. And like as Brooke said, talking about how they, you need to remember them their whole life, not just that one moment. You know, they're not to be recognized by that one moment that took their passing, but instead of all the years that they lived and, and what they did as a person while they were here with us. I can't agree with you guys more. I mean, if you think about it, if somebody, I lost my mom to cancer, Mm -hmm. we don't memorialize around her last week when she was frail and her worst condition possible. You talk about all those good times that you had and who the person was as a total. And I don't know why that conversation hadn't happened back then, Mm -hmm. even around suicide, but it seems like we've made a tremendous amount of progress. And to your points, I mean, I can't tell you When we lost my brother-in-law, the number of people that came up to me that kind of, hey, I lost my uncle to suicide, Mm. but everybody thinks he had a heart attack. Or I lost my uncle, he crashed into a tree. By the way, it was on purpose, but Mm. we don't talk about that. It was a car accident. And those were the kinds of conversations. And today, much, much different. Do you attribute any of the openness of the conversation amongst, to go back to like some of the celebrities and some of the people that people have a tendency to look up to, whether that's right or wrong, in terms of their openness around mental health and suicide. Have you seen that or feel that that's been a tremendous help 
to opening up that conversation as well? Yeah, I would say social media in general has been a huge opportunity for us to share our story, but also to create such vulnerability around this topic. I mean, you know, 12 years ago, I wasn't logging onto Facebook and seeing people share their stories so openly. But now with the likes of Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat, especially, you know, shout out to, to your young listeners, those Gen Zs, they're really able to just to just jump on any platform and be so vulnerable. And I think that, yes, celebrities have certainly held Solomon Thomas. You know, he was at the AFSB gala that we attended together. He's doing the defensive line and, and he's really made a, a difference in the NFL. I think that celebrities and, and icons and large names are certainly changing the conversation. But I think at the bottom and at the end of the day, it's people who are willing to share their stories, everyday folks who are going viral on these social media platforms and, and making people feel like they're not alone, making people feel like they're not crazy. You know, right. how about that? So I think that, you know, social media can be bad, but also ha- has shown a lot of light to this conversation as well. That's amazing. So, Jamie, let me ask you a question. If I'm listening to this and I'm struggling mentally, mental health wise, I'm suffering from depression, perhaps, and I'm looking for help. Mm. What advice do you have for somebody who's out there struggling that obviously they could get involved in PSI Love You Day, but that's going to be one day. What do they do? What are their options to look for help and where should they go? My biggest advice would be to take a step back, take a deep breath and focus on just a moment in time. You're going to take it moment by moment, step by step. If you feel that maybe you feel you know overtaken by the world and, and you can't do certain tasks right now. Don't worry about that. Just worry about getting yourself better and worry about finding help. There's therapists, there's psychologytoday.com. You can find a local therapist, a local psychiatrist nearby your area. They can call the crisis text line and they can actually, I mean, te- you know, not call text, <laughs> <laughs> Right. text the crisis text line, AFSP. They can check AFSP's website and they have resources through there. And also reach out to someone that you know, have a close buddy that knows what you're going through. So then they can kind of check on you because when you have someone who is in a good state of mind, them checking on you moment to moment kind of gets you through, you know, I can get through this, even if it's just brushing your teeth or taking a drink of water, just really celebrating those small milestones. Yeah, I think people have to come to the realization that everybody has a struggle at some point. And it doesn't mean just because you're having a struggle doesn't mean that this is a permanent thing. It could be something that you're going through just in the moment and you kind of need to get over the hump. It could be last for a second or two and you just need to get snap out of it, so to speak. You know, there's all different things. This doesn't have to be a situation where you're going to be on a medication or that robust. And if it is, then, and it works great. You know, Mm -hmm. do you have any advice to folks out there that might be struggling too, Brooke? Yeah, well, I have to say, Jamie got me this gratitude journal about a year ago. And just recently, I picked it up again, I'll admit. Mm. And I've been writing in it, you know, almost every day, just three things that I'm grateful for that day. And I think that it's really allowed me to switch my mindset. Working from home right now can be quite difficult. You know, working alone can be quite difficult. But you realize that there are such little moments throughout the day, whether it be on a Zoom call, whether it be a conversation with a friend, or whether it be the sun coming through a window that brings such joy and bring a smile to my face. And so taking a moment to to write those down has really helped me and hopefully can help others as well. And also too, an activity that we do with PS I Love You Day is something called positive post-its. And a lot of schools will write positive affirmations and hang them up all over their schools, on lockers, bathrooms. But why not do it for yourself at home? I find myself doodling Throughout the day, you know, writing positive affirmations and sticking it on my desk, on my wall, just somewhere, you know, that I see often. And that certainly helps as well because it reminds you that you're worth it and you're and you're amazing and you're going to get through this. And those are some of the things I write. And I'm like, you are going to do this and it's going to be OK. And and it sounds so simple and so silly, at, you know, sometimes, but it's seeing that common reminder that really gets me through the day. You know, it's tough. Yeah. Gratitude is so important and it's so easy to put you in the right mindset, especially at the beginning of the day, just writing Mm -hmm. two or three things that literally takes probably a minute and a half, maybe 30 seconds each. And it's just like a great way to start the day off on the right foot for sure. 
Absolutely. So if our listeners, after hearing this, are interested in getting involved in PSI Love You Day, I guess there's a couple ways, right? And maybe, Brooke, you could talk to, you know, if I'm an individual that wants to get involved in PSI Love You Day, how do I do that? And then maybe Jamie could talk to, if I'm a school, somebody who's in a school right now listening, or a business that would like to get involved, how do I get involved? So, Brooke, if I'm an individual, how do I get involved in PSI Love You Day? Yeah, well, first, you know, you can follow us on social media at PS I Love You Day on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube as well. We post challenges. We post uh, social media posts that are just little reminders. You can share those on social media because, you know, you share those on your Instagram story. You don't know who's going to see that that day that it really speaks to. And, and they take it as a sign that they were meant to see that. So that's one way by following along or on a journey on social media. And also, too, by spreading kindness in a way that you make it part of your daily habits. And by doing that, you're really a friend of PSA Love Day because you're living our mission. You're educating people about mental health. You're spreading kindness and you're spreading awareness. So I think really, you know, as a friend of PSA Love Day, you can share our mission on social media. You can participate in kindness activities, kindness challenges that we're sharing And also to, which leads to Jamie's point, you can sign up for our annual event and get your school and business excited for the next year. Amazing. So how do I do that, Jamie? If I'm a business or school and I want to get involved, what do I do? So they can head to our website at psiloveyouday.net. And through there, there'll be a participating tab. And on participating, then they'll see that, you know, at the top, it says, do you want to get involved? If you're not listed below, do you want to get involved? And they can click that. And from that, they have to plug in a little bit of information. From there, we get notified that they have they are interested and we'll send them an email back, whether it be sometimes people write us little messages like, hey, I, I'm not getting started just yet, but can you give me an idea? And we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have on how you can get your school involved, business, community, when spreading the mission of PSI Love You Day. Great. And you as an organization help support them and get the word out through their organizations in order to get the people involved that are at those schools and at those businesses, right? Yes. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And we give them uh, essentially a Google Drive, a, a toolkit essentially filled with worksheets and hearts to hang up on windows and different messaging that they could put out on their own social media. And really just by meeting all these different individuals, we're able to create this story together and create something really spectacular. And so these are activities that you can do all year long. You know, it doesn't just have to be on the second Friday. Amazing. So what are the next big things up for both of you, Brooke and Jamie and P.S. I Love You Day? Anything big coming up on the horizon? Yeah, well, in 2022, P.S. Love You Day was recognized uh, by the New York State governor to be the second week of February. So we're finger crossing that that will be an annual annual uh, celebration, an annual honor that was made done by Assemblyman Michael Durso. So we're really grateful for that. So that was a big deal, uh, this recent celebration. But I think really what's next is we want to get 500 schools and businesses Mm. involved. You know, we really want to get our message to be in in at least one school across the nation. We really just want, you know, not only our story, but so many other stories to be heard. So that's on the brink. And we're, you know, we're finger crossing and we're continuing to spread the word in hopes that that does happen next year. Anything big you're hoping for, Jamie? Yeah. So in this upcoming year, we're really hoping also to target more law enforcement Mm -hmm. to help them with their mental health awareness and and realize how important it is that what they're doing is so vital to our communities, but also it is also vital that they're taking care of themselves. So that's something that kind of is in the works that we're hoping to expand um, in the upcoming year. And that's where your father, Joseph, was a member of NYPD, correct? Yes, he was. Yeah, so so I was going to, you know, say to give context that our dad was in the NYPD for 18 years. And a few years ago, we received this really special message from a kid in his 20s. And he wore a PS Levy Day shirt underneath his uniform during the annual event and really opened my eyes that this is something that not only do young people and and middle-aged people and elderly, but it's also people in particular professions that, you know, it takes a toll every day going to work. That was a great one, Jamie, because we're really hoping for that too. And yeah, so we'll see what happens there. And are you in schools all across the country? You have no geographic boundaries, really. If you wanted to, you could spread this thing throughout the world, I would imagine. Yes, definitely. We even had we had a school in Taiwan that has celebrated multiple years. 
mind schools in Colorado sign up, schools in Tennessee sign up this year, schools mm-hmm. in Florida, Virginia, uh, some New Hampshire. So I think the bold goal should be not a school in not a school in every state, but a school in every state amongst the world, right? Yes, oh, that, that would be <laughs> fantastic, you know, especially our dad came from a very Italian family. And, you know, speaking of the Italian culture, to see this celebrated in schools in Italy would be out of this world. All right, and- well, you might have to put that on the uh, plate for upcoming years then, because that would be amazing and certainly a great testament to him, to you and the great work of P.S. I Love You Day. So listen, both of you, it's been a pleasure having you on, but we end every show by asking each of our guests the same question. And I'll ask you, Jamie, first, and then we'll go to Brooke. What did you do today? Because this is the Midland Money Mindset that brought you joy and put you in the right mindset for success. So today, um, it's a beautiful, sunny day. And what I did was I made sure I got outside and spent some time enjoying the fresh air to start my day off right. Amazing. Sounds like a great plan. What about you, Brooke? We may have already had a little prelude to what you're going to say, but we'll see what you say here. All right. All right. We'll see if it's the same thing. So I, I would say this, that knowing that this was going to happen today, it honestly made my day. I was super excited for that. You know, I was quite tired, quite lethargic when I woke up this morning. And so I got in my car and I blasted some music and I went for a quick drive. And like Jamie said, it was a beautiful day outside. And so it was just a great opportunity to, to sit for a few seconds have no responsibility, just focus on the road and just clear my mind to get prepared for this. Nothing wrong with that. I thought you were going to say you were journaling in your gratitude uh, journal, but I guess not. I'll write that later on tonight (laughs) to say I'm grateful for this, for sure. There you go. Nothing wrong with that. Well, listen, I know you said it already, but just in case somebody wasn't listening, we don't want them to go backwards. We'll also have this in the show notes. What's the best way that people can connect with both of you and with PSI Love You Day? What's the easiest and best place for them to go? Yeah, so they can follow us on social media at PSI Love You Day, or they can drop us an email at p.s.iloveyouday at gmail.com. Great. Anywhere else, uh, Jamie? I think that, that those are the best two places. All right. Sounds good. And we know you're all over social, so we'll have that in the show notes as well. It's been a great pleasure having you both on and make it a great day. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. I want to thank Brooke and Jamie DePalma for being guests on the Midland Money Mindset. Brooke and Jamie have taken their family tragedy and created P.S. I Love You Day, not only as a tribute to their dad, but as a way to impact countless others. Mental health and suicide prevention is something I am extremely passionate about as well, and feel privileged to know both Brooke and Jamie. It is amazing to see the tremendous impact they are having on the schools, their community, and the world. Brooke and Jamie, as well as PSI Love You Day, can be found across all social media platforms, and all the contact information needed to find them can be found in the show notes. Thank you for joining us this week on the Midland Money Mindset. Make sure you visit our website at midlandmoneymindset.com and smash the subscribe button so you don't miss a show. We encourage you to help others find our valuable content and please don't keep us a secret. You can also schedule an Is There a Fit call right from our website or by using the link that you'll find in the description section of your podcast player or app. And be sure to join us for our next episode to learn more about getting your mind right when it comes to all things money. The opinions voiced in the Midland Money Mindset Show with Lawrence Sprung are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. Investing involves risk, including possible loss of principal. No strategy ensures success or protects against loss. To determine what may be appropriate for you, consult with your attorney, accountant, financial or tax advisor prior to investing. Investment advisory services offered through CWM LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Guests on the Midland Money Mindset Show are not affiliated with CWM LLC.